Welcome back to Southwest Yard and Garden. We're with Judy Nickel, an Albuquerque master gardener, who's talking about some of the things that are very important to New Mexico gardeners, but especially northern New Mexico gardeners. And right here, you've got a juniper. This is a little lady juniper. Female juniper makes berries. Male junipers make pollen. And a lot of people are very, very allergic to uh, the pollen from junipers. Now, normally they pollinate in March and April, uh, depending on what part of the state you're in. Uh, Albuquerque has outlawed the sale and planting of male junipers, uh, by and large, but it's not outlawed in the rest of the state. But a lot of people are concerned. I go and, and right. talk to people all over the state, and they're tending to avoid the junipers, not use them in the landscape, because they know junipers are associated with hay fever allergies. What we want to do is let them know that if they buy the ones with the berries, they That's can it. avoid the allergy problem. Yep. If, if all you have is, of course, if all you have is female junipers, you, you may or may not get much in the line of berries. But the berries, uh, the wildlife, bear, uh, birds and all that, they like to come and get the berries. So it's, an, it's another plus that you get from the female juniper is getting the, the wildlife, especially if you're in the northern areas where you have larger lots and you have more uh, bird life. But even in the home landscape, um, you can get upright junipers, spreading junipers, low-growing junipers, and females. And the berries will be different size. But this is about the time of year that they're making berries. So if you're going to plant juniper, you can go to any nursery, look for the berries, and you're safe. Right, and this is a good time to be planting it because we're in the monsoon season, and they will tolerate planting now or even into the fall. Right. Well, this is a plant real common to northern New Mexico and higher elevations, even in the southern part of the state, but it's not looking so good. This one was in a street planting on the sidewalk in a little bitty circle, much too small for the size of the tree, surrounded by concrete, hot, dry, hardly ever watered, no way to get water into the root zone, but something else got in the root zone. Yes, uh, this is outside of my office. Uh, they do try and water it a lot but they use de-icing salt during the winter. We've got one, uh, one of the uh, spruce on one side of the door and one on the other side, and the side where the traffic comes from, they use de-icing salt. That spruce is looking horrible. This, both pieces are from that, and it was brown this spring before the leaves began to come out because the de-icing salt washed into the planting hole as that uh, snow and ice melted, and it caused the damage in the tree. By spring, it was beginning to brown out, uh, they've talked to me about it, and they've watered heavily to try and leach the salt out. But again, it's in a very small planting site. It's in a very hot location. Here in Albuquerque, these have a hard time even in the good sites. We've got some pretty spruce in Albuquerque, but if we go into the higher elevations and further into New Mexico toward the north, we're going to find some very beautiful spruce. Right, and, and you should plant spru spruce in a very large area. They have this beautiful skirt around them, and that should never be pruned, <laughs> should be kept symmetrical and beautiful in a lawn or someplace where the water will go all the way around the whole root zone and preferably a little bit of afternoon shade. Judy, these are rather lanky looking plant. What's oh, going on here? This is an aster and with chrysanthemums you do four inches high until the fourth of July but quite frankly in our season we can do it we can keep cutting them back more. So you cut them every time they grow four inches high, you prune the top out? Well, theoretically, but you know, some of these things you can even do with hedge trimmers because they're so vigorous. This was an, this is an aster. A little bit wilted now because <laughs> you cut it to bring it in here. Yeah, and it's been out of the ground, I mean, cut for a long time. Anyway, it was cut here some time ago, and then it grew these two stalks, and so now we're going to cut these back over here, somewhere in here, and then this will fork off and you get more blooms that way. And you do the same thing over here, cut these things back, and that will promote double flower, another set of flowers, so that you can have more flowers on the top of your plant. Be more compact. More compact. Less damage by the wind, and you'll have more flowering. Right, especially more flowers. And That's what you grow these things with for. With asters, yes. And asters. Lots of small flowers, yeah. very beautiful. This one is the Thanksgiving aster. It blooms around Thanksgiving, ah. which is very nice to have something blooming that late. And so it has to keep getting cut back a lot, otherwise, uh, you're going to wind up with one little bitty flower up here. It's all leggy and whipped around by the wind, so mm -hmm. even that flower may not develop. Mm -hmm. So that's, uh, and it's uh, chrysanthemums, asters, a lot of those things that bloom late, but it's nice to keep cutting them back. Well, Curtis, somebody brought this into the extension office where Rick Daniel works and uh, wants to know what this is. Okay, what we have here is a cottonwood tree with petiole leaf gall aphid. 
and the aphid attacks, lays its eggs in the base of the petiole, the stem that the leaf attaches to the main stem with, and then it swells up at the base of the petiole. The eggs hatch out on the inside, and you see the brass and the uh, webbing from the uh, young larvae inside there. As they mature, a hole opens, and they fly away and lay more eggs. Nasty little guy. They're not fun to have. They're not major damage. They can cause it if there's enough of them there, but generally they're not a major problem. So you don't have to do anything spring or anything like that for them? It's a little hard to catch them as far as timing. If it becomes a problem, then you'll need to get with a county agent, develop the timing for your area, and spray the appropriate material. Well, Judy, thanks for coming by again today and bringing in these samples. Thanks for asking.